Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Let's look at study guide for chapter 4A. This will be for section 4.1, graphing quadratics in standard form. So, the first part, determine the vertex of the quadratic function, state as a point. Well, we need to remember the formula to help find the x value of the vertex. And that little formula, remember, is x equals negative b over 2a. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in the values for b and a. Now remember, there's already a negative in front of the b, and the b is a negative 9. All right, so that becomes positive 9 over a negative 6. Simplify that, and that becomes negative 3 over 2. Most people, or most teachers, would prefer that you leave that as a fraction, but if you need to, you could change that to a decimal. Okay, so that's the x value of the vertex. Now to find the y value of the vertex, we've got to plug that back into our equation. All right, now we could use our calculator to figure that out fairly easily. Here we go. We've got negative 3 times negative 1.5 squared minus 9 times negative 1.5 plus 4. And we get 10.75. Now again, uh, a lot of teachers would prefer you move, switch that back to a fraction. So remember, you got this math button. And you can switch that back to a fraction. So as a decimal, 10.75. As a fraction, 43 over 4. All right. Now I'm going to write that as an ordered pair answer. And I'm just going to put it in, in the fraction form. And there we go. All right, there's number one. Okay, same thing with number two. We need to find the x value of the vertex. And again, there's already a negative in front of the b, and b is negative, so you're going to have two negatives there. And that becomes positive three-fourths. Again, prefer to leave that as a fraction, but if you need to, that's 0.75 as a decimal. Plug that back in to find the y value. All right, here we go. And, okay, well, that, negative 6.125, and let's see what that looks like as a fraction. All right, negative 49 over 8. So our vertex is... 3 fourths, negative 49 over 8. All right, that's number 2. Let's look at number 3. Determine the x-coordinate of the vertex. 
of the quadratic function by using the formula. Okay, same thing as number one and two, except this time it's broke down just finding the x coordinate. Here we go. B is negative eight, and A is negative two. So that's positive 8 over negative 4, which is negative 2. All right, part A is done. Part B, same thing as we did in number 1 and 2. Plug that back in. All right. Simplify that, and you end up with 15. All right, we're going to extend this one, and we're going to make a table of values, putting the vertex in the middle of the table. Find other values by plugging the x values in the quadratic function. All right, so again, our vertex is negative 215, so that's going to go in the center. That would be right here. Now this graph is not going to quite fit. So I'm going to end up counting. Okay, I'm going to count the y-axis by twos. That way it's going to fit. So the first, so I'm going to count by twos. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. All right. So I can plot this point. And that would be, it's going to be a little bit tricky here. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Nope, that didn't make it bigger. Here we go. All right. All right, this will help me graph it. So if I count by twos, then the vertex is going to go right here. All right, right in between those two lines. Negative 2, 15, counting by twos. All right, so picking some other values that are close, okay? I'm not going to show the work for this. I'm just going to write this in. So, for example, I want to pick, let's say, negative 3 and plug that in. And then I'm going to plug in negative 4, and I'm going to plug in negative 5. I'm going to plug in negative 1, 0, and 1. All right, so when I plug those in, I'm going to get the, the following values. So I'm going to get 13 here, 7 here, negative 3 here. Uh, here I'm going to get 13. Remember, a parabola is symmetric, so the numbers should match. See how the top and bottom match with negative 3 and the 7 and 7 and so on. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and graph these dots. Again, I'm counting the y-axis by twos. So the negative 3, 13 is going to go right here. And the negative 1, 13 is going to go right there. The negative 4, 7. going to go right there and the negative or zero seven is going to go right there and then we've got negative five negative three right there and then negative one negative three right there Oops, nope, hold on here. 
Those are negative threes, Mr. Ellery. All right. So right there and right there. Okay, that looks way better. All right, sorry about that. And let's draw our parabola. All right, voila. There is the graph for that function. All right, let's move on. Number four. Determine if the quadratic function has a minimum or maximum and state value and state y. Okay, it does not say we have to find the maximum and minimum value. We just have to say whether it does and why. Well, remember, the min and max is determined by the a value. So in this situation, a is negative 1. That means it's going to open down because it's negative which means it's a maximum. In number five, the a value is a six. Okay, it is positive. So that means it opens up. Therefore, it is a minimum. Number six, same as on the first page, we're going to graph this function. First, we're going to determine the x value of the vertex, then the y value of the vertex. We're going to make a table and graph it. All right, here we go. So here x equals negative. Again, b is already negative, so negative 5 over 2 times 1. So that's going to be a positive 5 over 2. The decimal for that is 2.5. We're going to plug that in and determine what the y value is. And we end up with 17.75. Now, the fraction for that, again, you can use your calculator if you need to, is 71 over 4. Okay, I think I'm going to stick with the decimal on this one. All right, so that's our vertex. So remember, that's going to go in the center. Now, again, this one's really weird. So we're going to end up uh, counting by threes on the y-axis. Okay, so I'm going to be counting by threes on the y-axis. Let me make this bigger. So if I'm counting, so let's plot the vertex at two and a half, seventeen point seven five. Again, we're counting by threes on the y-axis. So two and a half, and then up 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, so just under the 18. So let me put a little dot right there. Let's see if I can get this to work. Let me do that again. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, so right 
there. And make this a little bit bigger. Okay, I'm a little bit off. All right, plugging in the other numbers. So let's go ahead and put two in. We get 18. We plug one in, we get 20. We plug zero in, we get 24. We plug three in, we get 18. We plug four in, we get 20. And if we plug five in, we get 24. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the 524. So over five, one, two, three, four, five, and then up to the 24, counting by threes. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, right there. All right, now the zero, 24, that would be right here. All right, let's see if I can put the others in. 420, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. So 20 would be right about there. And then on the other side, right about there. Oh, I don't like that spot. Okay, that's better. And 318, be right about there. Whoops. And 218. All right, these are really, really, really close together. All right, let's just connect those dots. There we go. And there's the graph for that one. All right, that is the end of section 4.1.